Mail is a type of armor consisting of small metal rings linked together in a pattern to form a mesh. A coat of this armor is often referred to as a hauberk. History The earliest example of mail was found in a dash and chieftain's burial located in Sia Mesta, Romania. Its invention is commonly credited to the Celts, but there are examples of Etruscan pattern mail dating from at least the 4th century BC. Mail may have been inspired by the much earlier scale armor. Mail spread to North Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia, India, Tibet, Southeast Asia, and Japan. Mail continues to be used in the 21st century as a component of stab-resistant body armor, cut-resistant gloves for butchers and woodworkers, shark-resistant wetsuits for defense against shark bites, and a number of other applications. Etymology The origins of the word mail are not fully known. One theory is that it originally derives from the Latin word macula, meaning spot or opacity. Another theory relates the word to the Old French, malia, meaning to hammer. The first attestations of the word male are in Old French and Anglo-Norman, my, mela, or male, or other variants, which became maili, my, mela, male, or mile, in Middle English. The modern usage of terms for male armor is highly contested in popular and, to a lesser degree, academic culture. Medieval sources referred to armor of this type simply as mail, however, chain mail has become a commonly used, if incorrect neologism first attested in Sir Walter Scott's 1822 novel The Fortunes of Nigel. Since then the word mail has been commonly, if incorrectly, applied to other types of armor, such as in plate mail. The more correct term is plate armor. Civilizations that used mail invented specific terms for each garment made from it. The standard terms for European mail are derived from French. Leggings are called chasses, a hood is a coif, and mitons, mitons. A male collar hanging from a helmet is a camel or a ventail. A shirt made from mail is a halberk if knee length and a roberge on if mid thigh length. A layer of mail sandwiched between layers of fabric is called the jazarant. A waist-length coat in medieval Europe was called a burnie, although the exact construction of a burnie is unclear, including whether it was constructed of mail or other armor types. Noting that the burnie was the most highly valued piece of armor to the Carolingian soldier, Bennett, Bradbury, De Vries, Dickey, and Justice indicate that there is some dispute among historians as to what exactly constituted the Carolingian Bernie, relying only on artistic and some literary sources because of the lack of archaeological examples. Some believe that it was a heavy leather jacket with metal scales sewn onto it. It was also quite long, reaching below the hips and covering most of the arms. Other historians claim instead that the Carolingian Bernie was nothing more than a coat of mail, but longer and perhaps heavier than traditional early medieval mail. Without more certain evidence, this dispute will continue. Mail Armor in Europe The use of mail as battlefield armor was common during the Iron Age and the Middle Ages, becoming less common over the course of the 16th and 17th centuries. It is believed that the Roman Republic first came into contact with male fighting the Gauls in size Alpine Gaul, now northern Italy, but a different pattern of mail was already in use among the Etruscans. The Roman army adopted the technology for their troops in the form of the Lorica Hamata which was used as a primary form of armor through the imperial period. After the fall of the Western Empire, much of the infrastructure needed to create plate armor diminished. Eventually the word mail came to be synonymous with armor. It was typically an extremely prized commodity as it was expensive and time-consuming to produce and could mean the difference between life and death. In a battle, mail from dead combatants was frequently looted and was used by the new owner or sold for a lucrative price. As time went on and infrastructure improved it came to be used by more soldiers. Eventually with the rise of the lanced cavalry charge, impact warfare, and high-powered crossbows, mail came to be used as a secondary armor to plate for the mounted nobility.
By the 14th century, plate armor was commonly used to supplement mail. Eventually mail was supplanted by plate for the most part as it provided greater protection against windless crossbows bludgeoning weapons and lance charges. However, mail was still widely used by many soldiers as well as brigandines and padded jacks. These three types of armor made up the bulk of the equipment used by soldiers with mail being the most expensive. It was sometimes more expensive than plate armor. Mail typically persisted longer in less technologically advanced areas such as Eastern Europe but was in use everywhere into the 16th century. During the late 19th and early 20th century mail was used as a material for bulletproof vests, most notably by the Wilkinson Sword Company. Results were unsatisfactory. Wilkinson mail worn by the Khedive of Egypt's Regiment of Iron Men was manufactured from split rings which proved to be too brittle, and the rings would fragment when struck by bullets and aggravate the damage. The riveted mail armor worn by the opposing Sudanese Mahdists did not have the same problem but also proved to be relatively useless against the firearms of British forces at the Battle of Omdurman. During World War I Wilkinson sword transitioned from mail to a lamella design which was the precursor to the flak jacket. Also during World War I a mail fringe, designed by Captain Cruz of the British Infantry, was added to helmets to protect the face. This proved unpopular with soldiers. In spite of being proven to defend against a three-ounce shrapnel round fired at a distance of 100 yards, mail armor in Asia. Mail armor was introduced to the Middle East and Asia through the Romans and was adopted by the Sassanid Persians starting in the 3rd century AD, where it was supplemental to the scale and lamella armor already used. Mail was commonly also used as horse armor for cataphracts and heavy cavalry as well as armor for the soldiers themselves. Asian mail was typically lighter than the European variety and sometimes had prayer symbols stamped on the rings as a sign of their craftsmanship as well as for divine protection. Indeed, mail armor is mentioned in the Quran as being a gift revealed by Allah to David. 21 to 80 It was we who taught him the making of coats of mail for your benefit, to guard you from each other's violence. Will ye then be grateful? From the Middle East mail was quickly adopted in Central Asia by the Sogdians and by India in the South. It was not commonly used in Mongol armies due to its weight and the difficulty of its maintenance but it eventually became the armor of choice in India. Indian mail was often used with plate protection. Plated mail was in common use in India until the Battle of Plassey and the subsequent British conquest of the subcontinent. The Ottoman Empire used plated mail widely and it was used in their armies until the 18th century by heavy cavalry and elite units such as the Janissaries. They spread its use into North Africa where it was adopted by Mamluk Egyptians and the Sudanese who produced it until the early 20th century. Mail was introduced to China when its allies in Central Asia paid tribute to the Tang Emperor in 718 by giving him a coat of link armor assumed to be mail. China first encountered the armor in 384 when its allies in the nation of Kuchi arrived wearing armor similar to chains. Once in China mail was imported but was not produced widely, due to its flexibility and comfort. It was typically the armor of high-ranking guards and those who could afford the import rather than the armor of the rank and file, who used the easier to produce and maintain brigandine and lamella types. However, it was one of the only military products that China imported from foreigners. Mail spread to Korea slightly later where it was imported as the armor of imperial guards and generals. Japanese mail armor in Japan mail is called kuzeri which means chain. When the word kuzeri is used in conjunction with an armored item it usually means that mail makes up the majority of the armor composition. An example of this would be kuzeri gasoku which means chain armor. Kuzeri jackets, hoods, gloves, vests, shin, shoulder, thigh guards, and other armored clothing were produced, even Kuzeri tabisocks. 
Kuzeri was used in samurai armor at least from the time of the Mongol invasion but particularly from the Nambo Kucho period. The Japanese used many different weave methods including a square 4 in 1 pattern, a hexagonal 6 in 1 pattern and a European 4 in 1. The rings of Japanese mail were much smaller than their European counterparts. They would be used in patches to link together plates and to drape over vulnerable areas such as the armpits. Riveted Kuzeri was known and used in Japan. On page 58 of the book Japanese Arms and Armor, introduction by H. Russell Robinson, there is a picture of Japanese riveted Kuzeri, and this quote from the translated reference of Sakaki by Rako-san's 1800 book, The Manufacture of Armor and Helmets in 16th Century Japan shows that the Japanese not only knew of and used riveted kuzeri but that they manufactured it as well. Kara Kuri Namban, with stout links each closed by a rivet. Its invention is credited to Fukushima Dembe Kunitaka, pupil, of Hojo Awa no Kama Yuji Fusa, but it is also said to be derived directly from foreign models. It is heavy because the links are tinned and these are also sharp-edged because they are punched out of iron plate butted and or split links made. Up the majority of Kuzeri links used by the Japanese. Links were either butted together meaning that the ends touched each other and were not riveted, or the Kuzeri was constructed with links where the wire was turned or twisted two or more times. These split links are similar to the modern split ring commonly used on keychains. The rings were lacquered black to prevent rusting, and were always stitched onto a backing of cloth or leather. The kuzeri was sometimes concealed entirely between layers of cloth. Kuzeri Gusoku or chain armor was commonly used during the Edo period 1603-1868 as a standalone defense. According to George Cameron Stone entire suits of male kuzeri gusoku were worn on occasions, sometimes under the ordinary clothing Ian Bottomley in his book Arms and Armor of the Samurai. The history of weaponry in ancient Japan shows a picture of a kuzari armor and mentions kuzari katabira with detachable arms being worn by samurai police officials during the Edo period. The end of the samurai era in the 1860s, along with the 1876 ban on wearing swords in public, marked the end of any practical use for male and other armor in Japan. Japan turned to a conscription army and uniforms replaced armor. Effectiveness Male armor provided an effective defense against slashing blows by edged weapons and penetration by thrusting and piercing weapons. In fact, a study conducted at the Royal Armouries at Leeds concluded that it is almost impossible to penetrate using any conventional medieval weapon. Generally speaking, males' resistance to weapons is determined by four factors, linkage type, material used, weave density, and ring thickness in most examples. Male, if a warrior could afford it, provided a significant advantage to a warrior when combined with competent fighting techniques. When the mail was not riveted, a well-placed thrust from a spear or thin sword could penetrate and a poleaxe or halberd blow could break through the armor. Some evidence indicates that during armored combat, the intention was to actually get around the armor rather than through it, according to a study of skeletons found in Visby, Sweden. A majority of the skeletons showed wounds on less well-protected legs. The flexibility of mail meant that a blow would often injure the wearer, potentially causing serious bruising or fractures and it was a poor defense against head trauma. Male-clad warriors typically wore separate rigid helms over their male coifs for head protection. Likewise, blunt weapons such as maces and war hammers could harm the wearer by their impact without penetrating the armor. Usually a soft armor, such as gambeson, was worn under the hauberk. Medieval surgeons were very well capable of setting and caring for bone fractures resulting from blunt weapons. With the poor understanding of hygiene, however, cuts that could get infected were much more of a problem. Thus, male armor proved to be sufficient protection in most situations. 
manufacture. Several patterns of linking the rings together have been known since ancient times, with the most common being the 4 to 1 pattern. In Europe, the 4 to 1 pattern was completely dominant. Mail was also common in East Asia, primarily Japan, with several more patterns being utilized and an entire nomenclature developing around them. Historically, in Europe, from the pre-Roman period on, the rings composing a piece of mail would be riveted closed to reduce the chance of the rings splitting open when subjected to a thrusting attack or a hit by an arrow. Up until the 14th century European mail was made of alternating rows of round riveted rings and solid rings. After that point European mail was almost all made from wedge riveted rings only. Both were commonly made of wrought iron, but some later pieces were made of heat-treated steel. Wire for the riveted rings was formed by either of two methods. One was to hammer out wrought iron into plates and cut or slit the plates. These thin pieces were then pulled through a draw plate repeatedly until the desired diameter was achieved. Waterwheel-powered drawing mills are pictured in several period manuscripts. Another method was to simply forge down an iron billet into a rod and then proceed to draw it out into wire. The solid links would have been made by punching from a sheet. Guild marks were often stamped on the rings to show their origin and craftsmanship. Forge welding was also used to create solid links. But there are few possible examples known. The only well-documented example from Europe is that of the camel of the 7th century Coppergate helmet. Outside of Europe this practice was more common such as theta links from India. Very few examples of historic butted mail have been found and it is generally accepted that butted mail was never in wide use historically except in Japan where mail was commonly made from butted links. Modern uses. Practical uses mail is used as protective clothing for butchers against meat packing equipment. Workers may wear up to 8 pounds of mail under their white coats. Butchers also commonly wear a single mail glove to protect themselves from self-inflicted injury while cutting meat. Wood carvers sometimes use similar mail gloves to protect their hands from cuts and punctures. Scuba divers use mail to protect them from shark bite, as do animal control officers for protection against the animals they handle. Shark expert and underwater filmmaker Valerie Taylor was among the first to develop and test shark suits in 1979 while diving with sharks. Mail is widely used in industrial settings as shrapnel guards and splash guards in metalworking operations. Electrical applications for mail include RF, leakage testing and being worn as a Faraday cage suit by Tesla coil enthusiasts and high voltage. Electrical workers. Stab-proof vests Conventional textile-based ballistic vests are designed to stop soft-nosed bullets but offer little defense from knife attacks. Knife-resistant armor are designed to defend against knife attacks. Some of these use layers of metal plates, mail, and metallic wires. Historical reenactment Many historical reenactment groups, especially those whose focus is antiquity or the Middle Ages, commonly use mail both as practical armor and for costuming. Mail is especially popular amongst those groups which use steel weapons. A modern hauberk made from 1.5 mm diameter wire with 10 mm inner diameter rings weighs roughly 10 kg and contains 15,000 minus 45,000 rings. One of the drawbacks of mail is the uneven weight distribution, the stress falls mainly on shoulders. Weight can be better distributed by wearing a belt over the mail, which provides another point of support. Mail worn today for reenactment and recreational use can be made in a variety of styles and materials. Most recreational mail today is made of buttered links which are galvanized or stainless steel. This is historically inaccurate but is much less expensive to procure and maintain than historically accurate reproductions. Mail can also be made of titanium, aluminium, bronze, or copper. Riveted mail offers significantly better protection ability as well as historical accuracy than mail constructed with butted links.
Riveted mail can be more labor-intensive and expensive to manufacture. Japanese mail is one of the few historically correct examples of mail being constructed with such butted links. Decorative uses mail remained in use as a decorative and possibly high-status symbol with military overtones long after its practical usefulness had passed. It was frequently used for the epaulettes of military uniforms. It is still used in this form by the British Territorial Army and the Royal Canadian Armoured Corps of the Canadian Army. Mail has applications in sculpture and jewellery, especially when made out of precious metals or colourful anodized metals. Mail artwork includes headdresses, Christmas ornaments, chess sets, and jewellery. For these non-traditional applications, hundreds of weaves or patterns have been invented. In film, in some films, knitted string spray painted with a metallic paint is used instead of actual mail in order to cut down on cost. Films more dedicated to costume accuracy often use ABS plastic rings for the lower cost and weight. Such ABS mail coats were made for the Lord of the Rings film trilogy, in addition to many metal coats. The metal coats are used rarely because of their weight, except in close-up filming where the appearance of ABS rings is distinguishable. A large-scale example of the ABS mail used in The Lord of the Rings can be seen in the entrance to the Royal Armouries Museum in Leeds in the form of a large curtain bearing the logo of the museum. It was acquired from the makers of the film's Armour Weta Workshop when the museum hosted an exhibition of Weta Armour from the their films. For the film Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, Tina Turner is said to have worn actual mail and she complained how heavy this was.